Almost every year when we start thinking about, well, what should we talk about in Ag PhD TV? It's either Darren or me that throws out, hey, let's talk about residue management. It's fall. Well, residue management is a very, very big topic. We'll try to kind of summarize a few things for you today and give you a few of our thoughts. But I would say the thing that we're most concerned about going into next year is seed bed preparation. So how are we going to get our seed bed ready? I think that's probably where we want to focus today. Let me start with the big animal here, corn. Uh, you get a 10 foot tall corn plant, a 12 foot tall corn plant. I don't care how big it is, it's big. So you got a lot of stock out there and long pieces of stock potentially. So for me, it comes down to how can I break that up to begin with? I really like chopping corn heads, regardless of your tillage system, if you're following uh, or going through a corn crop, because now you can size up some of that residue to help it flow through tillage tools uh, or your planter or, or whatever you're going to do next out in that field. The other thing I like with my chopping corn head is I like to leave uh, the stalks about 18 inches tall. That way we've got some wind fences out there in the field that are going to catch residue so it doesn't blow around and leave your field. So I do like sizing up that residue. Now, what about in wheat? Uh, we harvested some wheat this summer and we went right back in to drill in a cover crop. And with our drill, we kind of laid that residue down, chopped things up, I really like that approach. Sizing up that residue, you get it to, to flow through things better and it breaks down quicker as well. But it all depends on what's your goal. So for us, our goal is seedbed preparation. For you, your goal may be, I want to hold as much snow out there as I can. So in that case, you might want to leave everything tall. A lot of people when we first started doing some no-till stuff about 25 years ago said, oh, let the corn stalks stand tall and then go plant in there with beans. We found that to be disastrous because what ended up happening is we hairpinned a whole bunch of residue in the spring. So that's why I don't care if we're talking no-till, strip-till, conventional till. We like small pieces of residue. We like that sized up and we want to be able to move things easily out of the way in the spring. Every spring on our farm, it's cool and wet. Every single spring. So we want to be able to move that residue without having to slice it because it's very hard to slice something when it's 40 degrees and wet. All right, when you talk about slicing residue, one of the most commonly used tools these days is a vertical tillage tool. If we've got a coulter set up, whether it's individual coulters or gangs of coulters, we can roll through fields if those stalks uh, are, are in decent shape. We find better luck doing that in the fall than we do sometimes in the spring because by the springtime, a lot of those stalks can be really soggy and tough to cut through. Uh, but if we get good conditions in the fall and we get nice dry down, uh, we can chop right through them with vertical tillage tools, size up the residue, get a little bit of soil mixed up on that residue too to improve breakdown. When we start thinking about conventional till, there are really a couple of things that pop right into my head. First of all, I don't want to create a whole bunch of compaction. That means you have to be a little bit careful about being out there when it's too wet. Second, I got to think about what am I doing to my soil's organic matter? If I want to pull out the moldboard plow again, the odds are extremely high. I'm going to start decreasing my soil's organic matter. And in the short term, it's going to be great. I'm going to have a lot more nutrients available. In the long term, it's going to be bad. I've got fewer nutrients sitting in my soil. I've got lower organic matter levels, which means I have less cushioning, more chance for compaction. I'm just going to create a lot more problems long term. So you got to kind of weigh these things out. What do you want to get accomplished in the short term versus the long term? There are a whole bunch of different ways to farm and we could spend all day long talking about residue management in the fall. But those are two big things for me. We got to keep in mind, hey, I, I got to be thinking about compaction. I want to think about overall, what am I doing to my soil's organic matter? And then again, for us, our number one thing is always, how do I make sure I have a good seed bed in the spring so next year's crop gets off to a great start early? As you're managing that residue out in fields, you may also be managing our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. 